All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? We are going to go through how to set up your mechanics as a Protoss player. We're going to go through absolutely everything. There is a lot to do to make sure StarCraft is easy to play. It's a mechanical game. There's a lot of things you can do very quickly to give out orders, to micro, to control your units, and a lot of things that simply make doing that so much easier if you use the right techniques. So we're going to start out by going through. We're not going to go here into the hotkeys menu just yet. Let's tab out, and I've got my Bronze to GM Protoss document, and we're going to go through this list First things first, keyboard and Windows settings. Now I'm on Windows. You guys might have to do a bit of searching if you're on Linux or uh, Mac on how to do this, but all you wanna do is search for keyboard and you want this keyboard properties menu. You also wanna do mouse and you want your mouse properties menu, which here we go, additional mouse settings. There we go. So we can close that. So now we have mouse properties and keyboard properties. First thing with keyboard properties, guys, you wanna make sure these are on the shortest and fastest possible. Repeat delay and repeat rate. What this does is when you're holding down, say, Z, Z if you're Amer uh, American, to warp in zealots, see how quickly that queues up zealots. Whereas if we lower that a lot, then that's going to change, okay? Um, likewise, hardware, uh, we also... No, we don't need any hardware. That's it. So all you need to do, shortest possible, fastest possible, click apply. I'm not going to, because we're going to show you something else in a moment with that. Then we're going to go mouse properties. So we're going to go cancel pointer options and you want this to be on six out of 11. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but you go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of 11, right in the middle. And you want to make sure you turn off enhanced pointer precision. If you've been using this your whole life, because it's on by default in Windows, it'll take a bit of getting used to. And some people say, ah, not worth it. It's too different to what I'm used to. I don't like it. I'm going to leave it on. There is maybe one in 50 pro gamers across every esport that uses pointer precision. They're very rare. And they are players who basically said, oh, I didn't find out about this until I'd been playing for 10 years and I'm just not willing to relearn it. So you can play at a very high level with that on, but it is considered to be suboptimal. It essentially accelerates your mouse as you're moving it. You don't have as consistent speed and it makes it harder to form muscle memory and to be as accurate with your mouse movements. So I do prefer turning that off, putting it in the middle. But as with any drastic change that you make, it could... Uh, basically mess with your settings. Keep in mind DPI matters as well, guys. So your DPI, you can usually change in your own software. For me, I'm using a Corsair mouse right now, uh, but my Corsair software is not open. Essentially, it's different for everyone depending on what software you're using, guys. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of opening up my, my Corsair software. You can see I've set it to 800 DPI. I go to my DPI settings. I've set every different profile to 800 DPI on both axes. It's going to be different for you depending on your mouse and how you set it but 800 is a very nice dpi number uh combined with just neutral sensitivity in starcraft and windows where you're moving your mouse quite a lot to move now some people that don't like that they're used to playing with 6,000, 12,000 dpi where they move their mouse a tiny bit with mouse acceleration it flings across the screen problem with that is it's very hard to be accurate and whilst you can do things quickly you're often having to repeat orders I used to play with 1800 DPI and uh, higher sensitivity and everything. And the way you can change this and get used to lowering it, if you do want to have more wrist health because bigger movements, easy to control, it's less tensing and stressing and trying to flick your wrist back and forth, which is where a lot of hand injuries come from. Uh, what you do is you lower your DPI by like 200 a week or something like that, or every three or four days you drop it by another 200. So it's almost imperceptible, but over the long run, several weeks or months, you will get it down to Somewhere between 600 and 1,000 is where most pro gamers, uh, StarCraft pro gamers end up using it. All right, so that's your DPI there. That's your mouse settings. Let's go back to keyboard. So keyboard's really fun, guys, because if you want to do a super pro gamer thing, you can go in the registry editor. Do this at your own risk. The things we already showed you in the keyboard properties with the repeat rate and stuff is perfectly fine. However, if you want to have the crazy fast repeat rate, notice like if I just open a browser tab here, I type... See how quick like that speeds up, guys? And this is a lot of people aren't used to this. So they'll be typing and they'll be they'll try to type the and that'll happen. So if you change this in the registry, this doesn't just change StarCraft. This changes your settings across your whole computer, which is why a lot of people don't use it. On the other hand, when you see pros with crazy fast settings, the ability to just build a billion Zerglings instantly, warp in 20 zealots instantly, that sort of stuff, it is because they've gone in the registry and done this. And this is tournament legal um and pretty much all pros use it so what you do if you want to do it is you go in um and you go down to this menu so you go h key current user control panel accessibility keyboard response and then you can just put these numbers into the ones i like you can fiddle with them a little bit but auto repeat delay 150 auto repeat rate 10 
and flags 59. And that allows me to hold down my key and warp in zealots very quickly. This is not something you need to do. I advise most casual players don't do this, but I might as well include it in a mechanics video in case you're like, how do I do that thing? If you want, you can come back later and add that in. All right, guys, that's your keyboard and mouse settings. Now let's go through the in-game settings in the menu. Hotkeys, not that important yet. We'll get to that in a second. First things first, graphics. I do prefer full screen graphics. The reason I'm using windowed right now is so I can tab in and out very quickly. But when I'm playing, I do prefer full screen. Usually it'll give you higher frames per second. And that's very important. If you press Control Alt F at any point, it pops up those numbers. You see in the very top left of the screen, it's very tiny because I'm on a 4K monitor, so it pops up like minuscule, but that'll tell you your FPS. Right now we're in menus, so it's locked at 60 FPS, but when you're in game, you can look at that. It also shows you your ping, shows you your GPU temperature, which for me, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to sync with it, and how much uh, of your video memory is being used. The main one is the FPS. When there's a big fight going on, say Zerg vs. Terran, Protoss vs. Zerg, lots of banelings crashing across the screen, you want to make sure your FPS is as high as possible. A lot of people are like, oh, I have 100 FPS, that's fine. And it's like that at the start of the game, the moment there's a big fight, it's like 15 FPS. And it's really hard to control things because the screen is just kind of stuttery and things don't update as quickly as they could. And it's really hard to use your abilities and control things as well as possibly. So if you have an older computer, a computer that lags a bit, try to turn everything to low. I've got things on a custom setting that is mostly, I used to play on mostly low with things like textures turned up high for performance. But these days I have a sick computer and I'm mostly a content creator rather than a competitive player. So I like these settings. It's a mixture of medium. It's not too overly shiny and too much extra dumb detail. It just makes it hard to read what's happening on the screen. But we've still got like physics on high because it looks cool. We've got most of the settings on medium and texture quality is on ultra, which if you've got a graphics guy, I mean, one gig of graphics RAM, everyone's got that these days. And uh, effects also, you want to be on high or potentially on ultra as well. And um, yeah, you can always turn those settings down, fiddle with them as needed. If you need a more optimized setup, what you want to do is you want to go to Team Liquid Hybrid Graphics. And a bunch of dudes figured out, um, if you click on that link, go check that link out. Uh, they figured out, hey, we want to make the best settings for visibility, seeing invisible units with the lowest uh, performance hit. So they kind of optimize that as much as possible. And they've got this whole super nerdy thread where you can go through and if you really want to check all that out, go for it, check it out, adjust it as needed. With sound, it's up to you. I personally use these sound settings. Take a screenshot and copy them if you want. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, reverb sounds cool. Uh, probably not the most useful for playing. Some people like to turn voices and response sounds off or error sounds I turn off, but other people like to leave error sounds on. It's totally up to you guys what you prefer in these settings. Just find what works for you. I can't say there is a massive, uh, you know, change we need to do. Um, I guess game volume during alerts does matter a bit. You don't want that to be too low, but also you don't want it to be too high. So when you're getting an alert, it kind of phases the other sounds down so you can actually hear that your supply blocked or your main base is under attack or something like that. Next up is mouse and keyboard. I've heard that putting this off of an even amount, putting it at 51%, is better than 50%. I don't think it really makes much difference, but that's what I do. Cursor size, I like this size. You can adjust that as needed. Confine mouse cursor so it doesn't go off onto your second monitor. Um, but mine is going off to my second monitor. Why? Because I'm not in game right now. And if I'm on full screen mode, that wouldn't happen at all. But if you guys want, you can just keep it confined always or keep it confined never. So you can scroll over to other monitors. Now we do want to enable mouse scroll speed. This is the most important one, guys. I normally play with this at 89%. It's at 100% right now. Apparently, I raised that at some point to 100%. Okay. I don't know when that happened. I didn't even notice. This is by default on 20%, which means when you put your mouse at the edge of the screen, it very slowly pans. The lowest speed any pro gamer uses is Maru. He uses 40% scroll speed. And most pros use 100. So anywhere between 50 and 100 is, or 40 at 100 is what I'd recommend. Once again, like with the mouse DPI, if you're not used to it, try to just crank it up 10% every few days and you'll get used to it more gradually that way. If you're just, if you crazy like me, I just put it up to a billion straight away and I just suck for a bunch of games and get used to it quicker that way, but it's a more painful learning process. So if you prefer to do it my way and make it harder for yourself in the short term, but learn quicker, if you're willing to persevere through, you could just change it at once. But a lot of people don't like that. So I like to give that option. All right, uh, as you can see, disable the Windows key so you don't accidentally tab out when you hit it. And that should be good. Down to gameplay. Uh, just copy these settings. Actually, no, no, no. 
So those are my casting settings, the ones I had on before. These are my playing settings. Uh, unit life bars always, control groups unclickable. So you can see the control groups at the bottom, but you don't accidentally click on them. Flyer helper is the little line in the dot underneath, say a mutilisk or a flying unit. So you can actually see, because the, the camera's on an angle in StarCraft, it allows you to, if you're aiming a spell or an ability at them, you want to aim at the little dot below the flying unit, not at the flying unit in the air, right? Just because your perspective's not top down, it's on an angle. So if you aim for the unit, you're going to shoot past the actual kind of area that that's hovering over. You might miss a size storm, for instance. Um, otherwise, just copy all of these. The reason we leave experience points on is so that you can, if you look back, you're looking elsewhere. Some stuff dies, you look over there. You don't know, did I kill something or not? Experience point. Oh, there's 10 experience points popping up. Looks like my disruptor shot killed a lot of stuff. Cool. So it gives you a lasting graphic. It also allows you to see if you're like in a rare situation. Oh, there's Dark Templar. I don't have detection. And I, I try to kill them with a disruptor shot or a Psy Storm. Oh, I can see the experience point, points pop up when they die. Otherwise, it's really hard to tell if they've died. So it's just a way to add some visual clarity to see when enemy units are dying. Oh, did I kill a lot of probes there or not? I'm not sure. I think I did. Oh, there's 10 probe experience point numbers popping up. Okay, I killed 10 probes. Just makes it way easier for you to figure out what's going on. Um, display build grid, easier to place buildings. Current order indicator shows little markers where you've told your guys to move or attack. Very, very useful. Um, all this stuff is great. Colors, if you guys have colorblind, you can turn on um, colorblind mode or just crank up the team color intensity as you like to make it a bit easier. Social, uh, if you guys really get tilted by people saying rude things, you can turn on the mature language filter and you can set these settings. I normally leave these off. They're on right now, probably because someone tried to spam a racist word to me while I was casting or something like that. Um, which is, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Language and region, um, this doesn't really matter except for when you're hosting custom games. So what you can do is you can go pick game server and lobby creation. And then whenever you create a custom game, rather than using this preferred game server, it'll just give you an option. You go create custom game and it's like, hey, what server do you want to make this on? Which is really nice. Um, likewise, if you keep getting matched with people on a really bad server, it may have got an incorrect ping read. Maybe it says you've got zero milliseconds ping to Brazil, even though you're really laggy there, so that the ladder keeps matching you on Brazil. Just click that refresh button, reopen it. It's going to show you a different, usually more accurate number. Usually not 9,999 ping to every region, but there we go. Okay, just took a few seconds. Well, Brazil's still resolving. Brazil's so laggy, it's still trying to figure out what that ping is. <laughs> anyway, that's a nice way to fix that up. Uh, lastly, but not least, Observer. I use the GameHeart Observer interface. Uh, if you guys want this, just Google GameHeart. There's different interfaces you can download. Um, I believe Streamlined is actually a custom interface I have that doesn't show any information. So it's kind of like mimics a Brood War interface, um, which people hate because they're used to seeing all the information. But very every now and then I like to troll my audience by casting games with no production tab. Can't see like the supplies and stuff. And you just kind of have to look around and discover what's happening as you go, which is... I think really fun, sometimes having a bit more suspense, but people are so spoiled with information and numbers in StarCraft, they get pretty triggered when that's the case. Um, but yeah, I like the Game Heart one. Up to you guys. The default's not too bad. It's just not as good for like casting. It doesn't show as much information on screen, but it's fine. All right, guys, so we've gone through keyboard and windows, in-game settings, menu by menu. Next up is rapid fire setup for warping in every unit type. So let's talk about rapid fire. Very important for Protoss, and we mostly want to use this for warping. So first things first, guys, go F10. Options, keys. We want to go standard, and then we want to go create new profile, BDGM Protoss, just write that. And that's just basically a copy of the standard hotkey setup. So now as I edit it, it's going to be saved as, as its own thing, and that's all good. So first things first, we wanted a rapid fire. We want the ability to kind of um, warp in units. So let's go global, and we want to go... Jesus, where is it? Uh, unit management, I think, is where it is. Uh, yeah, so you want to go global, unit management, and you want to go down to choose ability or AI target. And this is literally your ability to left click on things, so to select things. Or to place like a spell, right? Or an ability, like warp in zealot. So we're just going to put a Z there, Z for zealot. We're on standout keys. If you guys are using grid, obviously you would do this same process off of a grid layout, right? And you would adjust it as needed. Or if you're using the core, same. The, if you're using the core, it's, it should be built in. So we're just going to click accept. Now notice that's going to save that hotkey profile, right? So if we look at the hotkeys, we've got all these different profiles. And now we need to go out and do some fancy stuff. So we're going to go. Uh, let's just get this open. So we're just going to open up a Windows, right? 
we can go documents, StarCraft 2. Now we need to find our account. Which account is it? I've, I've logged on so many accounts, so I'm just going to select the first one. And the way we check is we go hotkeys. And we go, oh, this looks like it. Obs.campaign. So you, you want to look for the distinguishing hotkey profile that's in yours. So do I have all of those in here? Is that this one? That looks right. One, two, three, four, five different profiles on top of the defaults. One, two, three, four, five. Those are the same names. Cool. So what we want to do is we want to open up the Bronze to GM Protoss in Notepad. I'm going to open on the wrong monitor. That's okay. And notice it only shows the edited uh, commands because otherwise it's a standard hotkey setup, right? So it says target choose equals left mouse button. So left mouse button's the main and Z is the alternate. Now, the reason we're opening this is we're going to add extra alternates. All we need to do is go comma and then add the letters for our other units, which should be S for Stalker. I believe it's H for Adept, T for Templar, D for Dark Templar. Let's double check so those letters are correct. So all you need to do, guys, click on the gateway. Z, S, H, T, D, and E for Sentry as well. So we might as well add that as well. If you guys like, I don't need to rapid fire warp in sentries, you can leave it out. Obviously, there are some abilities like Storm is on T, so now Storm is on rapid fire. If you hold down T while holding a bunch of high Templar, it's going to throw a billion storms down on the ground. So if you don't want it on that, you can remove it. But all we need to do is we go save, close that. And now, let's just close that, open it. Let's check. Does it work? If we go global, uh, what was it? Unit management? Choose ability or AI target Z. Oh, it doesn't look like it's saved, guys. All right, so I don't know why it wasn't working this time, guys. We're going to go back to Runs to GM Protoss. Unit management. Oh, and now it works. Okay, guys, so I think I needed to change profile to a different one, and now you can see all the alternates are listed there. So I think, I think by just making sure the profile isn't open when I edit it, uh, made that work, for, as far as I can tell. Um, I, I don't know what I did wrong the first time, but <laughs> there we go. There we go. So it just should look like that. But whatever the letters are, if, they're, if you're using grid, obviously it's different letters for each unit. That's going to be fantastic. All right, guys, so we've gone into the Legacy of the Void unit tester uh, map made by Brandon. And we're just going to make a uh, pylon and a bunch of gateways to show you guys and test that this is working all right so we can go upgrades uh i guess um protoss warp gate there we go okay cool so now we can basically just check if this is actually working or not um by warping in some of these units now i didn't build a cyber core but that's okay it's gonna let me so all i need to do is go hold down the t key i'm not clicking at all and notice it warped in the high templar. So we could do that again. And we're just going to test all these letters, make sure they work. So the whole idea is that basically you're making it so by just holding down any of these alternate buttons, it simulates you clicking the mouse without you having to click the mouse. All you have to do is move the mouse around. No clicking required. I have to restate this over and over because I have some people go, yeah, yeah, with my rapid fire, it's weird. So when I'm holding down shift and clicking and I'm like, that's not rapid fire. They're like, yeah, no, no, that's, that's rapid fire. You know, because like I can, I can click lots of times and warp in lots of things. I'm like, that's not rapid fire. <laughs> All I need to do, guys, is hold down. I'm going to do stalkers next. S on my keyboard and then move my mouse. That's all I am doing, okay? So I'm holding down S and then I'm moving the mouse. And as soon as I had enough space for a new stalker to warp in, it instantly was warping in. And that's the power of changing those Windows registry settings, those keyboard settings, and setting ra up rapid fire for all these units, okay? So make sure you guys uh, just go into a different profile after creating that other one or go out of that profile, change the settings in the notepad, set it up, and this just makes warping in so much easier. Warping in those Dark Templar, and it's so quick. It makes it super easy and then beautiful. So that's rapid fire set up for all of our units. Next up, we've got Control Group Stealing as default. I really like this setup for all races. Some people don't like it. Um, I think it's fantastic. So I'm going to show you guys all you need to do is you go into your global control groups menu. And instead of control one, we're not going to use create control group. We're not going to use add to control group. Instead, we're going to use these new ones they added in Legacy of the Void. New, eight years old now. Create control group and take away units up there. And then 
add to control group and take away units. These are what we call control group stealing, because essentially what they are is you're both creating a control group or adding units to a control group. Say you've got an army of 10 zealots. You want to take five of those zealots and send them off. Easy peasy. You just go select five zealots, control two. You both put them on a second army and you took them off the first army in a single action. And that is why this is so fantastic. So uh, all you need to do to do this, guys, we're going to go through and we're going to basically take these settings and put them down here. So we're going to go instead of alt one, control one instead of alt two control two go down that whole list that was the wrong button sorry pressing the wrong button on my keyboard geez i'm really on code today aren't i probably have to use both hands to do these last ones and then the add to control groups rather than being alt shift they're just going to be shift one shift two and so on cool so basically this should all be red and this should all be red so we can still select our control groups by pressing the numbers as normal we still create our control groups by doing control one we still add to control groups by doing shift one However, whenever we do that, we're stealing them off any other control group they're on. The weird thing about this is it means control groups are exclusive. Units can't be on two different control groups at the same time. Some people, to get around that, they like to keep their uh, create control group the normal way. They don't use this control group one, so they leave that up here, just control one, control two as normal. And then they use shift. So whenever they add units to a group, it, it does the stealing. I think that just improves, it's a bit of complexity. I don't bother using that myself. I just accept it the way it is. The only downside, like I said, of doing it this way, it's very simple, it's easy. It just works the way control groups normally work. The only downside is you will not be able to put units on multiple control groups. If that's a big issue for you, like I said, change at least one of these or just do it the default way and don't use this mechanic. Only use it separately using the alt keys. You could just use the standard hotkeys. I prefer it this way for those reasons. The only other downside is because um, sometimes players fat finger things, they just mash buttons on their keyboard. If you do that, if you accidentally put these units on a different control group, you're removing them from the control group they were on. And then you're going to be like, wait, why aren't they on the control group they were on? What the hell? I'm trying to select my army. It's not working. And then you, you find you've added them to the hotkey with your Nexus. Something like that. And then you've got to kind of select that hotkey, control shift, click the Nexus out, remake the army group. It's a little annoying, but it rewards you in this way or punishes you, I would say, for fat fingering things a little bit more. Uh, in general, if you're panicky, kind of giving commands out all the time, that's usually a pretty bad habit anyway. So I, I don't think it's a big that big of a drawback, but if for you it is, like I said, you do not need to do any of this, but these are the hotkeys and the mechanics that I show you guys in my bronze to GM settings, uh, setups. I think they're the best. I think they're fantastic. I think they're very easy to get used to. And I think they just have so many benefits that far outweigh the uh, out, out, far outweigh the few negatives. Now, guys, whenever you're changing your hotkeys, just make sure you check your unbounds after doing things. Sometimes you accidentally input something wrong, and you'll see like, oh, selection doesn't work, or something like that. You're like, oh, whoops, I can't click on things. But here, this is exactly the things that we want unbound right now. We've done everything correct. Next up, guys, let's talk about control groups. You should always have a set system for your control groups. Um, so write out what you want to use those 10 control groups for. Um, first of all, we like our main army on one, our second army on two, our third is an army key is kind of often used to defend drops in our main base, but if we've got good map vision, we're not ever getting dropped, maybe we use it for a counter attack, like a bunch of zealots waiting off somewhere on the side of the map, so when our opponent moves out, we send those in to counter attack them. Basically just a third army squad, but I like it specifically with that kind of, this is to defend counterattacks and drops or to do its own drops or counterattacks, okay? Fourth is Nexus. So the Nexus comes in, uh, that's where you build our probes off. Five is Gateways. Um, if you do not like control grouping your Gateways and you prefer to use the default Warp Gate hotkey, you can use that. However, you should absolutely put putting your Gateways on a control group, at least for the early game. Maybe you prefer to just put them on the same hotkey with your Robos and Stargates, if that's the case, and just later on you take them off it because, oh, I just use that W key for the warp gates once I get to warp gate tech. But you need a control group for your gateways. I know masters players who don't use one and they just like really struggle against cheese. And they're always like, man, 
Ling Floods are so overpowered. Proxy Marauder is so overpowered. And I look at their replays and I'm like, mate, you're panning your screen over clicking your gateway and building a Zealot? Like, why don't you have your gateway control group? They're like, oh, I just use the default hotkey. And I'm like, what about the first five minutes of the game where you get cheesed or you're executing cheeses and you don't have warp gate? And they're like, oh yeah, I just manually build it. And I'm like, does that sound like, like a good idea? You're a masters player. How are you this... <laughs> this incompetent <laughs> oh so that's absolutely crazy hotkey your gateways for the early game it's very important to do that um i like this system and like i said i just add all my warp gates all my gateways and always use this hotkey for the whole thing um technically it's not number five by the way when you see me play i'm always using the right side of the keyboard because i use the core i use a very advanced control group setup so i'm actually not using these hotkeys that i'm showing you um, because it's a really weird one. I have my keyboard further out to the left than normal on a slant. I use my hand on it weird. If you want to look up the core, go set, search it up. But in terms of like the keys I feel most comfortable with from one to zero, this is kind of the order of which I use them, right? So we've got Robos and Stargates. I just press tab, which I actually use a side mouse button, by the way. I just press this left side mouse button to scroll between those. Um, I then put my upgrades. Forges potentially can add cyber cores or other upgrade structures that are important on that number nine. And then we've got the dumping key. Um, now you can use tilde, spacebar, whatever you want for your dumping key. Um, so essentially what you can do is a dumping key is when you want to use one of these steel control group commands. So create control group and take away units. You don't, you just want to use it to remove the units off the key they're on. You don't really care about selecting because zero, who's pretty, like who's selecting group 10 on zero on the far right. No one's using that, right? So what we can do, instead of using control zero for this one, we can say spacebar or maybe tilde, the squiggly line to the left of number one on a, on a US keyboard. And what you do then from then, all you need to do is press space and it's gonna remove those keys off of control groups. We call this a dumping key because you're not really putting them in something where you choose to collect them. It's like you're dumping them in the bin. You're throwing them, you're throwing them off your control groups. So some people like to use spacebar for that, some tilde, some a different key, caps lock or something. So you can do that. So whenever I say dumping keys, I basically just mean you're throwing these units into a control group. You're stealing them in there to remove them from whatever they're on with no intention of actually selecting that control group again, right? So I might use this if I select, oh, I want to send this zealot off to scout. I don't want it to be in my army key. Select the zealot, press space bar and click it out on the map. It's no longer in your army control group. So that's a really nice one. If you go check your hotkeys, space bar by default um, is jump to last alert is kind of useful in very slow games like Warcraft 3. It's a nearly useless command in a game as fast as Starcraft 2. So if you're in the habit of pressing spacebar a lot and this helps you break out of that, this is good. Yep, we already changed the control groups to control group stealing as default. You can use caps lock for select all army if you want, guys, um, which is going to be quite nice because we're going to unbind it. If you guys are really bad at not control grouping your army, I would say just unbind. Select all army key is probably better. Uh, select army units, this one. But like I said, you could put that on caps lock or tilde or some other key if you do want to have it accessible. Um, there are players who get to very high levels without really using control groups properly. It's just a massive handicap. It's way better if you don't use this select all army key at all until you've developed good control group habits and then you just use it every now and then to help organize things or to gather everything all at once for a big fight, okay? So we're gonna put that on that. Next up, we're going to do camera locations. Okay, guys? So, camera locations. The default cameras suck. <laughs> Look at these camera locations. you got to go Control F5, F6, F7, F8. How the hell are you reaching that? So, the, the normal ones, which I tell people to use, is just Control F1, Control F2, Control F3, Control F4, and Control F5. Now, a lot of people have issues with these uh, settings. I only use six camera locations. A lot of people only use a couple, but uh, I still set them all just in case I want to use them. And make sure jump to location is F1 through F8 as well, so it corresponds. Uh, but yeah, people have issues reaching these keys. Um, normally that's because they have really bad keyboards. Most good gaming keyboards um, have very little distance between... Bring up. I'm not sponsored by these guys anymore. It used to be years ago. A Corsair keyboard, but... Um, most gaming keyboards have the same layout. They're probably all made in the same factory in China, let's be honest. Um, notice there's very little gap between the F keys and the number one key, no, one, two, three, four. If you've got a big gap up there, it's hard, much harder to reach. So you want as little gap as possible between your F keys and your number keys, just so that it's easier. 
Um, I've had people go, it's just impossible to reach, Pig. How do you do it? And I look at their keyboard. I'm like, okay, well, you've got this old Microsoft keyboard with like a four inch gap between it. Like, yeah, that's that's not viable. Um, other people, even when there's a close gap, they still say it just feels awkward hopping up that far. I don't like it. If that's the case, you don't have to use this setup. Like I said, I don't use this setup. With the core, I use keys that are actually layered underneath my own ones. So you can use something like the core light or um, you could make up your own. Someone in my chat was saying, oh, rather than using these settings, what they actually use is they go like shift Q. Actually, no, no, I think they go, I think it was like control shift Q to set up their key, control shift W, control shift E. So it's kind of awkward to set up, but you, you only need to set them up once. I'm not going to go through all of them, just, just showing you. And then to jump to it, it's just shift Q, shift W, shift E. Shift R. So you need to use two hotkeys, which some people find awkward. But this person was saying, oh, that way my hand doesn't have to move. I really like it. So you can customize this however you want. But like I said, I'm just going to stick with the default because that is what most pros use. It's what you'll see most streamers use. And uh, I just want to kind of keep everyone on the same wavelength as, as best as I can. Oh, sorry, guys. That's meant to be Control-F1, isn't it? Whoops. All right. So that's what it should look like, guys, for the standards. Control F1 to Control F8 to create the camera locations and F1 to F8 to uh, jump to them. Now we did just unbind, follow current selection. I can't remember what the default is for that one, uh, but honestly that's just for observing games. So that doesn't really matter. As long as there's nothing else we accidentally removed. Oh, idle worker got removed. Okay, that's a good, let's accept for now. And then we can go back in and change idle worker. So unit management, uh, we want to find idle worker guys. That by default is on F1. Let's put that on a different key. I ended up using space for the other one, so I don't think I've used tilde. So we'll use tilde, tilde for idle worker. So you can just select that. It'll just jump to a random idle worker, or you can go control tilde, and it'll select all idle workers, which is really nice. Oh, it's late game. There's lots of fighting going on. A few bases are mined out. You just go control tilde, click on one of your new bases, all your workers that, are, that were no longer mining will run there. So um, yeah, not bad. Check our unbounds again. Looks solid. All right, guys. So there's our camera locations. I use the core. Only recommend that for hardcore, lifelong learners. Most other games I play don't have the customizability of StarCraft, so I actually use modified standard hotkey setups where I just change one or two things to be a bit easier to reach. Standard hotkeys, grid hotkeys are perfectly fine in most scenarios. There's a few drawbacks to certain things in grid, like, uh, you know, I know Zergs complain that morph banelings and detonate banelings on the same key, so sometimes people try to morph banelings, they accidentally blow up banelings, stuff like that, which is kind of hard to fix with the core, with, with, uh, with Sorry, with grid hotkeys is what I'm talking about there. But overall, I think it's fine. Oh, you can also make patrol Q or some other easy to reach key, guys. Um, why not? Why not patrol? So you just select any unit here. Uh, it's this one and we can go. I don't think we've used Q for anything, so we just use Q. And that'll change patrol for every one of your units. You can click on a different unit. Patrol is now Q. Awesome. Okay, yeah, last thing I haven't talked about yet is monitor size. Tournament standard is 24 inch, guys, 24 or 24 and a half inch. Uh, I recently upgraded to a 27 inch after many years of resisting. I really enjoy it. I think it's great. Uh, I still think if you go up to like 35 inches, it gets harder. Just the more movement you have to do, the more your eyes have to travel. It's difficult, even if you're further back from the monitor uh, correspondingly. It just, it seems like there's just a, a bit harder to play. Um, I know people that play on 60 inch TVs, 50 inch TVs. And uh, pretty much all of them have really bad mechanics. Um, no offense, guys. You know who you are. Good good followers of me channel. Um, and I've, I've convinced most of them to get on, on smaller monitors. On the other hand, if you're using a 13-inch laptop screen or a 15-inch laptop screen, you're really going to struggle to see the minimap. So if you can afford it, if you're taking StarCraft seriously, if you can get yourself a secondhand, you know, Craigslist Gumtree monitor for 50 bucks, um, that's 25 to 28 inches, 30 inches, somewhere in that range. That's probably ideal in my opinion. Um, does 144 hertz ma might it matter? Yeah, sure, it does. Um, it, it helps. Um, for me, I am playing on, I believe, 144 hertz right now. But honestly, I I don't notice it when I'm on, when it's on. I only notice it when I turn it off and go back to 60, and I go, oh, it's a little bit a little bit slower. But within a day or two, I adapt, and it's like technically it makes a very small difference, especially for very micro intensive play. But you'll be fine on a 60 hertz monitor. It's not the end of the world. Um, if you can get 120 or 144 hertz without it lowering your frame rate too much, yeah, it, it helps. It does help, but it's not something that's going to be nearly as important as size of the monitor, having a mouse that fits your hand well. Like I said, I like that 800 DPI, and I like to have a kind of hybrid half claw, half palm grip. 
and I like to do pretty big mouse movements as well. Um, not giant by any means, I'm not like one of those CS players where they're moving their mouse like literally from one side of the table to the other, but I do end up moving it like, for instance, a good measurement is if you go to one corner of your screen and you can measure how long it takes to go to the other corner. So I'm going to mark right here where the left side of my mouse is. And then as I move down to the bottom left corner, I can see I moved there about three inches, maybe three and a half inches to get from corner to corner of the screen. I know some people where that's about a centimeter of movement. And I think definitely you're going to be in the pace of StarCraft, misclicking a lot, trying to control these little movements and hurting your wrist and hand. So try to make sure you have the right size monitor and mouse and keyboard that feel comfortable for you, that preferably have all the keys very compact. Um, if you want, you can pull out any keys you're not using of your keyboard as well, just to help your hand not get lost. Uh, and if you're very new but using a keyboard, go do a typing uh, course. Uh, they're online, they're free. I think I used Radatype back in the day when I finally learned how to type properly in 2015. And I went from being a 100 word a minute, three finger typer with a lot of typos to being significantly faster than that with very few errors. Um, maybe not 100 word a minute, maybe 60 words a minute or something, whatever it was. I was pretty friggin' fast for a three finger typer, but there was so many typos, it was ridiculous. And that carried over into my StarCraft play as well. Anyway, that's all for the mechanics for now. I hope this helped you all out. Of course, I was referring to the Bronze to GM document throughout here, the very start bit going on mechanics for my 2023 Bronze to GM. So I hope this all helped you out. If there's anything I missed, post in the comments and I will try to answer you there. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.